Hello, welcome to part three of my arcade machine build project. Shall we get on with it? Yes, let's roll titles. and welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. Now I am on a mission to build my very own arcade machine and I've already made parts one and part two and in part one I looked at controllers and building a sort of test rig controller and then in part two I managed to get that test rig controller working with a Raspberry Pi which is going to be doing some emulation on my arcade machine. Now part three is all about what I actually need to build it. I've been thinking about it and I do actually need quite a lot. I thought in this part we'd build a, a bit of a shopping list of things we require and um, yeah, have a look at where we're gonna get them from, how much they're gonna cost and how the heck I'm going to pay for it all. So in a nutshell, I want to build my own arcade machine. I want it to be pretty faithful to an arcade machine that you might have found in the arcades in the sort of late 80s and 90s. Now it is going to have a Raspberry Pi inside of it which will do emulation, but I really want it to run original arcade machine boards. So I kind of get the best of both worlds. Now the whole idea of this project is building an arcade machine. I did think about actually constructing it from scratch and cutting out all the wood and stuff like that but I think that would make this project a lot more expensive and I'm not really great at things like that and I want this product to look really quite smart so I'm going to see if I can get a flat pack kit and basically build it up and then make it how I want it so uh, yeah let's Let's have a little look at some things together and uh, we'll talk about what I need and how it's all going to incorporate. So the biggest thing and probably the most expensive thing is going to be the arcade machine flat pack. Can you even get arcade machine flat packs? Well, let's have a little Google and see. Okay, machine flat pack. Let's have a look at this site. Okay, so this looks pretty cool. We've got bar top cabinets I don't want one of those I've got a space in the corner for it um, but they do pinball cabinet kits wow cocktail cabinet kits I did think about getting a cocktail cabinet they're the sort of ones that you sit at and kind of use almost like a table but I think wall mounted no wall mounted sounds fun and would actually fit into the space fairly well but I think because I'm going to be tinkering with it and changing things I really need something that I can pull out and move and work on so yeah, we've got an upright cabinet kit. Look at this. So they do these smaller scale kits, but I mean, I'm not exactly massive. That's what she said. That's what he said. Yeah, I'd like it to be sort of as full size as possible. And you can buy them in just plain MDF, but then you'd have to paint it or cover it. So I'm sort of guessing I'm looking at this kind of region. I think 24 inches will be enough for me. Let's have a look at this kit. Okay, looks nice, doesn't it? Now, it is actually a bit skinnier. It is a bit skinnier than a regular arcade machine, and I'd say that's probably because it's designed to have an LCD sort of flat screen in it rather than a big old CRT monitor. Yep, yeah, there you go. You can see it's sort of got this mounting plate here for an LCD monitor. Now, a lot of arcade purists would consider it to be sacrilegious not to have a CRT monitor. I would like to have one, but they are actually quite expensive now. A lot of people use them for retro gaming and things like that. And yeah, they are actually quite expensive. Plus, they're just not as reliable. So I think it would make more sense to get a flat panel monitor to go in here, just so it's that little bit slimmer and also it's probably that little bit more reliable. I mean, maybe if I make two of these in the future, we could go down the CRT route, but we need to make one to start with. So um, let's have a little look. Okay, I'm liking this. It looks like it's in two sections. Can you see there's a bit of a join line here? But that's okay, that means it's just probably a bit cheaper to ship and a little bit easier to build, I'd imagine. Okay, so it's got space for all your buttons and your joysticks. 
There are additional button holes there, I guess, for sort of coin and menu buttons, maybe. We'll talk about the coin stuff later on, but yeah, that's actually quite nice, isn't it? So it's got an access panel at the back here. So you'll notice the edges are unfinished and arcade machines have sort of like a plastic finishing strip, which is called T-molding. And we'll have to buy that separately. I don't think these kits come with T-molding. I think that is the kit for us. I mean, so eventually I think I'd really like my arcade machine to have a coin door and you can actually put coins in and also it acts as a way of hiding away the maintenance switches so you can insert coins for free and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe in future I'd be able to cut a hole in here and put in an actual coin door so it looks like a more realistic arcade machine. So how much? That is £321. Oof. Oh, hang on. Pre-drill plexi for control panel. Yeah, I want a sort of plastic top thing for the control panel. Okay, so that, that includes... Oh, no, it doesn't include it. Wow. Okay, so the shell itself is going to be £350. Right, I've made a little spreadsheet just to keep track of th things. So that is Arcade World. We need one of those and the cost is $350.99. Okay, and oh yeah, as I said, that doesn't include the T-molding. Now you can actually get art artwork kits for the machine because it's going to be like a multi-game thing. I think I'm gonna leave it black for now, but maybe in future we could get some Kip Hakes branded stuff for the side because you can order custom artwork. We'll, we'll consider that in the future. Does it say T-molding? Right, compatible with three quarter inch T-molding. We recommend purchasing 25 foot, 7.5 meters of T-molding to complete the arcade kit. So we're going to need 25 foot. Okay, so let's have a little look at the T-molding. I want this to be black and orange, I think. Um, kind of T-molding, it was quarter of an inch, wasn't it? There we go, we've got chrome, got blue, apple green, bright red, gold. Ooh, look at that, orange T-molding. How much is that then? So that, oh, that is per foot. Okay, so, so that's essentially 24 quid on T-molding. So that is the machine and the T-molding. And we're looking at 374 pounds. Christ. <laughs> okay, right, so now we need a monitor. I'm gonna go for a flat panel monitor. Now, I actually don't want like a brand new, all singing, all dancing one. I want something that's a little bit older and not actually in widescreen because arcade games, especially of the vintage that I'm interested in, aren't in widescreen, they're in sort of four by three. So, I guess that's something I need to look on like eBay for. Right, and it was 24 inches. That's not too bad. Just as cheap as possible. Oh, look at that, hang on. Don't think that's widescreen, is it? That is pretty good, actually. So it's got an HDMI port, a display port, and a VGA port, which, yeah, I think. This could be a winner. We'll put like 30 pounds as a budget for a, a monitor. We might get it for a bit more. We might get it for a bit less. We'll have to, we'll have to see basically. Now we've thought about the cabinet and the display. We need to think about the wiring inside the machine. Now at the heart of most arcade machines from the late 80s and early 90s, is the jammer harness. Now you're probably wondering what the heck a jammer harness is. Back in the late 70s and early 80s when arcade machines were becoming popular, all the different manufacturers had very different ideas about wiring up arcade machines and they'd use different kinds of power supplies and voltages and you'd get vector monitors and you get cathode ray tube monitors as well which is like the traditional monitors that created a bit of a problem because after a couple of years 
like new games would come out and the arcade operators would have to buy like these big brand new cabinets. Not everyone wanted to do that. So basically the Japanese Arcade Machinery Manufacturer Association got together and decided on a standard for arcade boards. And a lot of them would basically be like massive console cartridges and they'd have a 56 pin connector on them and you could take the game cartridge and put them in any jammer cabinet and it would just work and the jammer harness plugs into our arcade board and basically connects up the power, the controls, the video, the audio, all the switches for the coins and testing and everything like that. So we're going to need a jammer harness that's going to make the majority of the wiring in our machine. So I found a jammer harness on Amazon. Um, oh, look at that, it's actually got the pinouts of it there. So that sort of explains all the connections that come off the game board and where they link to in the arcade machine. And yeah, you can basically buy a big old harness with all the wires there and connect it up because I have wired one of these from scratch before and it is a bit of a ball ache. So for £13.94, that seems like a bit of a bargain. And that would be the bulk of the wiring in the cabinet sort of done in one hit. Cool. So let's add that to the list. Round it up to £14, you know, for Amazon price fluctuations. Now, next up, we need to think about our video signal. And a normal arcade video signal would just go straight into a cathode ray tube TV and sync up and work. But because we're going to a VGA monitor, we need a board to basically convert that arcade signal into a VGA signal that the monitor will understand and be able to display. So we need a converter board. And I think this one should cover our bases. It's got a connector here, which will take the input from our jammer harness. So our red, green, blue sync, etc and then convert it into a tasty VGA output that our monitor will understand. And I think it's got some sort of control buttons on it as well, so you can make adjustments and things like that. And I think it's got menus. And that is an absolute steal at 26 quid. So, um, well, 27. Now, obviously, I need to figure out the best way of getting the video output from the Raspberry Pi into the monitor because I can make a sort of finger connector that can connect my Raspberry Pi to my jammer connector, but the video signals coming out the Raspberry Pi are through HDMI. I'll have to think about that a little bit further. But we're getting there. We're building our list. It's a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be. But, you know, we roll. So we need something inside the machine to power it. Obviously the Raspberry Pi has its own power gubbins going on and I'll have to work out how best to supply that. Found on Amazon this arcade power supply which wax out the voltages that we need to plug it into our jammer harness. So it comes with 12 volts, ground, uh, 5 volts and yeah it takes in the 240 volts AC current and converts it down. So that's pretty reasonable at 22 pounds. Can't sniff at that. We need another joystick because I've got the joystick on the controller that I made there, but we need another one of those. Yeah, that's, that's the one I got. That's the same one as this one. And it actually works quite nicely. I'm pleased with that. So that's 14 pounds. We'll add that onto the list. We've already got some arcade buttons. We saw those in part one of the arcade build. Um, we need some more of them. So I've just thought some orange ones would be nice. And that's a whole set of six plus a one player and two player button for the princely sum of 13 pounds, which seems a bit of a bargain. So um, yeah, I think I've remembered everything. There are obviously going to be a few other sundries etc and probably some sh and probably some shipping charges associated with the uh, arcade machine okay <laughs> so this project not including the raspberry pi because i purchased that already is just go is going to be what basically just shy of 500 pounds 494 pounds 99 
that is the price. Now, unfortunately, I'm not made of money and I can't afford to do all of that in one hit. That's, that's a lot of money. I think I'm just gonna have to buy bits and pieces for it as I go, as I get some extra web design work. Go check out KCJH Design if you wanna help out. Um, yeah, and everything like that, because that is a lot of money to just knock out in one go. And I don't really wanna stick it all on a credit card because it's just a bit icky and everything like that. It's not an unreasonable amount of money, but it's, it's a fairly considerable sum to me. Obviously I can use the cash that I get from all my channel members, which are scrolling under there at the moment, all those cool people. That can help contribute to this. Um, if you wanna join the channel and help build this machine, then hit the join button below, or there's a link in the description so you can join the channel. I think also what I'm going to do to make this a bit more of a community thing is I'm going to create a collection pot on a website and I'll put a link to it there and I'll put a link in the description and if you wanted to donate an amount of money towards this project then feel free I'll leave the collection open for a month or so and just see if anyone wants to do it and if you do do it I think once the project is done or get a nice plaque to go on the inside or outside or somewhere on the machine with all the names of the people who've contributed to it. But please don't feel obliged to because I'm sure I can afford this myself. But you know, if people help out, that would just make the whole process a little bit quicker. So yeah, I've, uh, I've found a collection pot website that basically you can give X amount of money and once the collection pot is closed in a month or so, then I can cash it out and buy anything that comes with it. And I think what I do with the Amazon stuff is I'm gonna put a link to an Amazon wish list that's public. And if you wanted to buy something off the wish list, then you can do that as well if you wanted to. But as I say, please don't think I'm on the beg or this project won't happen without your help. Um, it will it'll just take a little bit longer that will that will help and you know like that flat pack is quite expensive <sighs> so yeah i think maybe the next part of this video might be once i get the flat pack kit or once i start assembling things and maybe doing like a test build or something or other um, but yeah if you've got any ideas of how you can help with this project then please do put them in the comments but I think the next hurdle is just getting all this cash together and buying all this stuff, and then we can make wonderful happen, in theory. If you're enjoying this content, please do make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notifications on when new videos go live. Obviously, I don't just do arcade-based content, I cover everything. So if you're slightly geeky, I've got, I've got no doubt in my mind that some of my videos will interest you. So yeah, I think that's it. I think I need to get the old piggy bank out and hopefully uh, next time I see you, we'll have a bit more than a spreadsheet. We shall see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.